Pluto get any snacks like this then? No. No. <laughs> To me, spare ribs just not worth the time eating. <laughs> spare ribs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think you're probably in good company. <laughs> Smoking the that's, some flavor impressive, beans. that's some impressive looking bacon. That's some nice bacon. <laughs> yes, it is. Very nice looking bacon. That's what we do it for, right? Yeah. The bacon. <laughs> have to have very sharp knives, obviously. Yeah, this, this one it's is really just so sharp, it's almost a problem. Catching on the bones, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it sure it is. And I'm being very judicious about not leaving anything behind. Because Al has made it very clear. <laughs> <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We've, been, we've been seeing it for months, too, on his it's YouTube. All about the bacon. <laughs> That's next year's BLTs right, right there. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the bacon. You'll have cheese in the spring. That's right. That's next year's BLTs. Winter. That's right. It'll be winter oh, eggs yeah. and bacon. There you go. Mm. Yeah, that's still a nice set of ribs. Oh, so yeah, I'm yeah, guessing you absolutely. could, like, if you, you wanted a few spare ribs, like at the the big end or the little end, you could cut it. You oh, be more yeah, generous yeah, this this is, you, none of this is waste. Right. This no, is but all I was still just saying, a good rack of ribs. But if you still like, want a more generous meat on the ribs, you could sacrifice either end of your bacon or... or yeah, so like, you didn't have it. to take the whole thing. You could, if you wanted, like, just a half of that <laughs> as fatter or spare ribs, yeah, you could just right. cut it a little deeper for that. Correct. Okay. So but you also get to that up here, too. Yeah. There's okay. also more ribs where you'll end up with legit meaty ribs right okay. here. Yeah. Like, it's awesome. Or for the next like, like the it. next half of your pig, you could do differently too. Right. Yes. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So you'll see, like, even though it looks like I took more meat here than I did over here, this is all rib meat. You know. So there's yep. no no belly was sacrificed in the making of this. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> uh, yeah. So we have our our spare ribs. Um, and you can see a little bit better now that the carnage tips now that I've kind of exposed them. Uh, but they run kind of laterally against the ribs. Yeah, they stop uh, the ribs from poking us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Cover the ends. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they serve some function besides being a pain to carve out. <laughs> so the next thing we'll do uh, is we'll go ahead and take off the, the front trotter and hock. Um, and there are many different uses for a trotter and a hawk. Um, uh, today, this trotter that I'm about to cut off is going to go in that pot. Um, Hopefully. Yeah. It's full. Oh, is it? We, we can fit in a trotter or two, yeah. Uh, are you guys familiar with collagen? Like if I if we talk about collagen, do you know what we're talking about? Yes, yeah. yes, maybe, yeah. It's maybe. good for your skin. Yeah, yeah. It's, good it's, it's good for everything, yeah. So it is a... Um, it is your skin. Yeah, I can't, yeah. I, I can probably do it half justice speaking to its like medical or health benefits but instead we just tell people like if you care about cooking then you want collagen like collagen is gonna it's gonna thicken and enrich anything that you make so why would I put this pig foot in that pot of water it's Let's because get full of collagen. <laughs> it's loaded with collagen, and that pot of water will in no time become this thick, thick broth instead of just a, a soup. Right? When you get a real broth, it, it gets thickens, like tacky on your lips. It thickens everything. Yeah. So, uh, you probably see me, I'm not explaining what I'm doing. I'm just working <laughs> this. I'm working it back and forth. It's, it's stiffened overnight, which we want, um, but I'm about to cut it, uh, hopefully, at the joint. And to do that, I like to fold it a few times, make everything nice and limber, so that when I go to cut it, it opens wide, right up for me. Not bad. So, um, one way to do that is to feel with your fingertips, just like I did with the cartilage tips. Like you stick your finger in there and you feel where the joint is. Another, Andy likes to tell people, he just there are two joints and he cuts just directly in the middle of them. Either one works, whatever works for you, but there's a, a pretty sophisticated little joint in here that you can, you can find. He's cutting your wrist, or the pig's <laughs> wrist. No, so if you, if you bend your wrist, it's got two places where it bends. 
you cut right between those, mm -hmm. that's where it opens up. Mm -hmm. It's a great place to destroy a knife edge. Yes. So I am trying to take my time just because I don't want to destroy my knife edge. But that's it. It fits together like a knuckle. Mm -hmm. And that's a trotter. We cut that off now because uh, whether it's the hawk or the trotter, it's much easier cutting those things off when it's attached to a big heavy anchor, right? If it were already separated, I'd have to be holding this while Andy's trying to hold that and it just becomes really complicated. Um, you want to do a, a trotter or a hawk next and then picnic from Boston? Yeah. We cut through everything that isn't bone with our knife and we cut through what is bone with our saw. We often will do this number where we hold it off the edge of the table, keeping a lot of the weight up here. It just allows us to manipulate things a little bit easier and use gravity on our side. Oh man, I'm almost back here. So this is kind of fun. We'll get to use the bone dust scraper for the first time today. Oh yeah, we can try Al's new one. Yeah. So this is a hawk. This is gorgeous, right? This yeah. is, um, and it's worth saying that um, we'll do a, 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 a just a, a cursory glance of anatomy here. Oh, this is bone dust scraper. Um, this one we brought. That one's owls. I'll do uh, this one. I'll use on the hawk, and that one I'll use on the shoulder to see how we go. Um, this guy, while bone dust is perfectly edible, um, it's kind of unsightly, and if you can get it nice and clean and feel like it's a little bit more of a professional, legit, less of a DIY in my garage sort of job, then why not? It's a simple little tool and it does a really great job. Look at that. Just, just what it's supposed to do. How's that one working? Just fine. As advertised. Look at that. Um, yeah, but just a, uh, a two-minute uh, discussion, discourse on anatomy. Um, I mentioned that the loin doesn't do a lot of work because it just kind of hangs out up here. Um, the toughest muscles on the whole animal are going to be the locomotive muscles, the ones that are actually moving this several hundred pound beast around all the time. The shoulder and the ham in particular, only the difference is the ham is tough and lean and the shoulder is tough and fatty, um, which is why the shoulder is delicious and, and that's why you would want to use it for like a pulled pork. It can just break down all the connective tissue and fat, break down and flavor it and make it delicious. But the ham, Andy and I are not huge fans of ham because if you know anything about ham, you almost never get it fresh. You will almost never see a fresh ham roast or a fresh ham cut. It is almost always brined and then after it's brined, it's either smoked or it's drenched in maple syrup, or brown sugar, or honey, or it's something to make it palatable. You know, the ham is not, it does not lend itself to hot fast cooking, or low slow cooking, or even moist cooking. Uh, it is just a tough lean cut. So, there are traditions that, that, that cure it, um, brine it, uh, smoke it, all kinds of things to add flavor to it. Um, whereas, um, the shoulder, for example, it has a lot of connective tissue and fat. The connective tissue, if you were to cook that hot and fast, you wouldn't be able to eat it. It would be so tough, your teeth wouldn't be able to break it down. But when you cook it low and slow over moist heat, all the connective tissue breaks down, creating this really, really unctuous, moist, juicy, flavorful meat. Um, interestingly though, the closer you get to the ground, you got your big muscle roots up here. You know, and then the closer you get down to the ground on any quadruped, um, the more ligaments and tendons and connective tissue and sinews you'll have. Uh, not a lot of meat. There's not a lot of meat down here or down here. But because of those other things I mentioned, all of which are really rich in collagen, they are loaded with flavor. They just need to be cooked properly. Um, you guys heard of eating high on the hog? Mm -hmm. Eating high on the hog is where the loin and all the tender cuts are. Low on the hog, you have to cook longer and they're tougher if you don't do it correctly. 
and chances are, uh, the lower on the hogs, the more likely like soup or beans are going to be for dinner because that's how that's how you that's utilize those plants. So, if you're the plantation owner, this is probably where you're going to be. Using. Everybody else, they get the trotter and hawk and or chitlins or chitlins. They chitlins. don't even eat the meat exactly. of the hog. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not to say that those things can't be made delicious. Uh, if you've ever cooked a pot of beans without a smoked hock and then a pot of beans with a smoked hock, there is a night and day difference. It's a favorite designated cut of the animal uh, because this this has nothing to do with Boston and it has nothing to do with a butt. <laughs> and this doesn't really have any hams in it and there's nothing in it I would want to take to a picnic. <laughs> right. It's interesting, we're near Boston. The butt is actually the barrel that it was. Yeah. Yeah. Does anyone know the origin of the term Boston butt? Yes, they the butt, in the butt is the, the um, cask that they were packed in. Yeah, they were stored in casks. They were They were stored they and shipped in, in, in a cask called that's butt. called the yeah. butt. Hmm. There you go. So we're going to close enough to Boston for someone to give us an answer. There you go. <laughs> Finally, now I know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 anyone, I'm yeah. just, just, things I've heard just repeating history. something I heard yesterday. Yeah, it's it's, it's yeah. the literal pork barrel. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> right. You really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I just made a cut without talking about it, but the. The idea now is to separate my picnic cam from my Boston butt. The way we do that, just like I went to this vertebrae here, or this, the end of the sternum here, I just go to the belly of the spine here, and I make one straight cut across and end up with a picnic and a Boston. So please, this is a little bit of a tricky one because, like, sure, this I have to, I cut here with my knife because there's nothing but meat, and then I cut here with my saw because there's nothing but bone. And then I get to get through meat under that, and then I get to the shoulder blade, because so I have to blow the salt back out. You want to hand somebody hold? I got it, thank you. Because I can do that. So I'm going to finish down to the scapula with my knife. I'm going to take that down to the table. Alright, and then of course I have to get this all back out to cut the short blade. Which is the scapula. Which guys probably do that. Out from up both sides just because it's nice. It's hard enough when Gina pulls these out of the freezer to cook them, knowing that they were raised and killed and butchered right here. It's, it takes a little bit of a, uh, getting used to, like trusting yourself, trusting that you're doing this well, trusting that even though this is a project you're taking on, like you're doing it as well or even better than if it were done commercially. And this is just one step in that direction, right? Like, you don't want to see a bunch of bloodshot stuff when you pull it out of the freezer. You don't want to see bone dust stuff. You want to know, like, no, this was done well. And this simple little tool helps that out. Basically. This guy right here, the picnic, is where you're going to get those crazy meaty ribs that we're referring to. Uh, they're often referred to as country style ribs. Um, I don't know the origin of that either, though I can guess that it just has something to do with the fact that uh, <coughs> they're just meaty and they belong on the plates of corn fed country boys. I don't know. But there is this really great uh, facial uh, plane right here. You can you can see that. I'll put it up there, maybe. Um, I mean, look at that. That that meat just wants to come off right there. Mm -hmm. 
and stay with the rest, <coughs> right? And it's really, really easy to do. I'm gonna get a little bit of tissue here. You heard us say a number of times yesterday, this should not be a messy, a messy day. It shouldn't be bloody. There is some stick wounds here um, in, the, in the shoulder that need addressed, and then there'll be a little bit of blood back in the femur. Um, otherwise, um, it's not that gory of an afternoon. When it is, we like to clean it up immediately because now that we're moving into this, the stage of food production and preparation, um, blood is a, uh, a pathway for pathogens. So we just do our best to make sure that whatever blood we have, we just dab it and toss the pick out of it. This doesn't happen often, but it happened already in that one gel. Pig obviously, I think I can say that quite safely in this group. This pig obviously experienced no stress or anxiety during the time of its death. But it does not matter. Every once in a while, we find these deposits, like Andy found, or I don't know who it was Anthony. Jonathan, maybe Anthony, cutting that jowl, mm. and you just saw that deposit inside the plane there. That happens every once in a while, and we don't know the, the cause of that. But the other place that we'll see it is right here and it's happened a number of times. We don't know why there happens to be this. I mean, it could just be from a stick, or it could be from a shard of, of lead or a bone fragment or something. But, but that all gets trimmed up, right? So this is your, your country-style uh, rack of ribs. Lots of meat on these ribs. We'll clean off that little bit of fascia, and they'll be wonderful. Yeah, yeah, these would be spectacular. Uh, that'll re require some trimming. If there's a place to do that on this cutting board, that would be dynamite. Okay, so now we have our Boston butt, our picnic with the um, country ribs removed, our loin, which is still perfectly intact, our spare ribs, our belly, and our ham. Um, at this point, everything, again, so far has been totally standard fare. Nothing, I, I haven't even had to ask, like, so what's the destination of this pork? All right, what did you want done with this? Because everything we've done so far would probably be done anyway. You know? um, now we get to a place where we need to talk about is this going to be bone in or bone less shoulder roasts, right? Is this going to be bone in or bone less chops? Like now you begin to talk, start talking about what it is your family needs out of this out of this area. We continue to cut, and more and more and more and more meat just keeps piling up everywhere. So if you can have more than one table or station. Uh, or you have somebody trained to wrap so that as pieces leave, they go straight to the wrapping station. Which right. we'll show you that. Yeah, we'll have all that demonstrated. Uh, but what Andy's proposing uh, is we take uh, a couple of these cuts and we move them out to the table out there and then uh, for like trimming stuff so that you don't necessarily have to you feel like you're missing anything. And the rest can be worked on here for demo stuff. Well, we uh, have four halves. So yeah, we'll be missing here. Lots of cutting. Um, so let's do that.